give you a little, um, this is my, I guess, yeah, first slide. Um, if you want, there's, I'm gonna give a, a little handout. If you want the handout, just go to collegeessayguy.com slash get the handout. And um, you can enter your email and it'll send you the handout. So I'll post that again in a little bit. But if you want to do that right now, I'll leave this up for like 30 seconds. CollegeEssayGuy.com slash get the handout. Make sure you do two T's, get, and then a separate T for the. And welcome, y'all. Thanks for being here. This is going to be um, a, a rip roaring ride. I've There have been times when I delivered this presentation early on, and it was so much content and information that um, by the end of it, it sort of felt like there was an old commercial in the 90s for, I forget what, it, it's not Casio, but I, it's funny, I forget the brand, but it was like a, a speaker brand. And it kind of felt like, it, and the guy kind of slides away because there's so much, it kind of was like that. So just to mix my metaphors, was it Magnavox? Thank you, Wendy. Um, I'm kind of a buffet guy. I, I didn't grow up with a lot of money. So whenever we went to a, um, a buffet, I kind of would go hog wild. I loved buffets. And that was me for the first seven years of being college essay guy. But the new me, the Ethan 2020, is tries to do more tasting menu style. And I know I've totally mixed my metaphors here. I'm OK with that. Are you OK with that? Um, so today I'm kind of presenting you a tasting menu of different resources for applying to college. Now, I asked some of y'all already who who've logged in what grades y'all are in. And I've gotten 10th grade, 11th grade. I didn't see too many seniors popping up. Um, so I'm going to be, you know, talking to you as though I'll, I'll probably, if there are any seniors on, let me know and say I'm in 12th grade. If not, we can kind of go leisurely and I'll talk about this in future tense when it comes to applying to college. But if there are any seniors, I've got some last minute tips that I can give you as well. So we'll start with a few snacks. I'm going to, I'm going to guide you through a couple exercises that I really love and I need my phone to do that. Um, one is called, I love, and one is called, I know. And then we'll do something called the core, core memories exercise. And then um, after that, we'll get into a few larger plates. This will, I'll spend a few more minutes on these. I'm going to talk to you about your activities list and why that's important in your application. And I noticed a couple of folks who said they are seniors. So I'm definitely going to say, hey, do this right now. For 10th and 11th graders, I'm going to say, hey, here's something to think about. We'll talk about the why us essay, which is why do you want to attend a particular college? Because that's one um, particular essay that students don't often get a lot of advice on. And it's really important. Uh, if, if your school that you're applying to is, is request that. And then I'll talk about, and hopefully this doesn't apply to you 10th and 11th graders once it's time to apply, but for those of y'all seniors who are applying now, how to address coronavirus or COVID-19 in your application. And then for dessert, I'm gonna connect you to my, what's called my college application hub, which is just a bunch of bunch of resources for all kinds, all parts of the process. All right, here's me. This is me in a different blue shirt. I usually pretty much wear blue shirts and with less gray hair, it would seem. But um, I studied at Northwestern, studied theater, performance studies, and then got a master's in acting. So I am a master of acting. <laughs> um, I got a couple of counseling certificates, one in like therapeutic counseling and another one in college counseling. Uh, I've been doing this pretty much, uh, I wouldn't say off and on, but pretty much consistently for the last 17 years. I took that break for graduate school. But um, this has been my jam. This is what I think about for eight hours a day, sometimes more. And last, oh, I wrote this reach 1 million yearly via my website. We actually did that in a month. In October, we had about a million hits on the website. So it's grown since I created this presentation, um, and which was last year. And uh, I'm a former MK. I was a missionary kid, grew up in Spain, Ecuador, Colombia, hablo espanol. I'm not gonna be leading this session in Spanish, but that's some fun fact. And uh, my website is known for the free stuff. So if you go to the website, go to the free stuff, there's pretty much anything you're looking for on the college application process. And one of the things that I skipped that you can't quite see it here, but let me actually, let me just scoot it over. I also have a podcast for those of y'all who are into the podcast world. Um, and then I've got this Match Lighter scholarship. So if you are a low income student or you know one, folks can apply for that scholarship and get free application help. And I say help, that's for rising seniors. So if you're in 11th grade, the application will open in April. So what else? I love, let's play this game. All right. So I want y'all to play this game and you can do this by typing. If we were in person, even if we were socially distanced, I would have y'all do this together, but uh, instead we're just gonna do it like typing. So the way it works, I'm setting a timer for one minute. And the way it works is I'm gonna say a list of things that I love 
And I, seriously, I want you to type this as you're doing this. It's more fun. And it goes like this. My name's Ethan and I love um, my daughter. Well, I have a picture of right here. I love um, that I have clean water to drink. I love the lighting in this room. I love, um, I love, oh, magnets. I love playing with magnets, the way they like click together. I love my grandmother. I love the way um, that North Carolina air smells, like in the mountains smells right around this time of year, even though I'm far away from North Carolina right now. I love the mountains. I love going for walks. I love um, Thai food. I love green papaya salad. I love spicy things, not too spicy. You see what I'm doing here? All right. That was only 40 seconds. I'm going to have you all do um, a minute. But seriously, do this, because if you don't, you're just going to be sitting there for a minute or worse, you're going to like go check email or something. Don't do that. Do this game. And I'm going to tell you how, how this can help you come up with an essay topic. OK, so and if you're a parent or a counselor, someone else, teacher, still do this. It's fun. And you'll see how I can how we can turn this into a college essay. All right. Three, two, one. What do you love? Make a list now. Go. Keep going. Free flow. Don't overthink, don't overthink it. Just whatever pops in your head. All right, time's up. If anybody wants to, just like Ella has done, put it in the chat box. I'd love to see. Thank you, Jasmine. What else do y'all love? Great. Awesome. So Jasmine loves dog. Well, you can look. I don't need to read it all to you. Take a look. Look how, Notice how different these are, too. Look at these peaks into each other's world. <laughs> I love that Olive Garden made it on there, Andrea or Andrea. OK, exercise two. Here we go. This exercise is called I Know. And it's similar, but it's not the same. I want you to make a list now of what are some things that you know a lot about. OK? We're going to do it for a minute. Actually, let me go, let me go first. My name's Ethan, and I know a lot about college essays. I know a lot about college basketball. I'd say I know a lot about college football. I know a lot about um, self-help books. I know a lot about nonviolent communication. I know a lot about. Uh, the International Phonetic Alphabet. I know a lot about theater, about acting, playwrights. I know a lot about voice, like how the that's looking like connected to International Phonetic Alphabet, etc. Okay, your turn for a minute. What are some things that you know a lot about? You could go on and on about. Three, two, one, go. What else do you know a lot about? Awesome. OK, again. I want to I want to see some of y'all throw these into the chat box. What do you know a lot about? Wow, these are awesome. Crochet, skincare, random science stuff, lifestyle eating in the state I live in. These are great. My gosh, each one of those 
could be a paragraph in a personal statement. This is awesome. Okay. So one more exercise and then I'm gonna show you how this turns into an essay. Did you all ever see that movie um, Inside Out? If you haven't seen it, I, I recommend it, but there's this moment in the movie where the main character here, Joy, she's, these are all, by the way, these are the emotions living inside this girl's head. And there's this moment where she's describing core memories and core memories are the moment, memories, these moments that have like created like the biggest parts of our personality. And in the movie, Riley, this is the girl whose head they're inside of, the, there's this, these core memories of goofball island, which is like the silly side of her. There's hockey island, which is like, you know, the athletic side. There's like friendship island, because that's a really important part of her. And then there's like family island. Actually, this one might be honesty island. One of these is honesty island, because that's a core value for her. So the third and final exercise for this opening is I want you all to make a list of what are the different islands of your personality? Like, what are the different sides of you? For me, for example, I would be like, um, one island of my personality would be like college essay guy, like teacher island. That's kind of what I'm doing now. But there's also like dad island. I have a six-year-old and that's another side of my personality. And then there's like basketball, sports side of me. And then there's games, which I would put a little bit different because I'm thinking of like board games and stuff. So what are the different islands of your personality? What different sides of you are there? Is there like an intellectual side? What would you call that side? Now, obviously you can kind of look in some of your I love and I know list if you want. Some of them is gonna be overlap. What are the big dimensions of who you are? How you spend your time? Maybe there's film island. And whenever you want to, you can put them in the chat box because that helps other people come up with ideas. Awesome. Love it, Christopher. Yes, Trika. Great, Claudia, how do those, how do these manifest themselves? Loyalty, family, intelligence, reading. Like, I'm just curious, reading is obvious, but how does loyalty manifest itself? Okay, great. So how does this all turn into a personal statement? Like, how would you take all of this stuff that you've just written in the last five minutes or eight minutes or whatever, and how would you turn this into an essay? So there's a little exercise. I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna, actually, let me give you an example. So what you can do is you can pick one of the things that you are, know a lot about or are interested in, and you can basically connect it to a number of values. And I'll give you a values list in just a second. And this can create an essay. So for example, I love games and I, there's a values list that I'll show you in a second. I can connect games to you know family because I grew up playing games with my family. Uh, games are also I connect to my creative side because I love coming up with new ways of thinking about games, playing them. Connection, I found beautiful connection with my friends through games. I find that oftentimes it's easier to connect and be vulnerable through games. And that could be a separate paragraph. So I could write a whole personal statement on this thing that I love or know a lot about. And each one of these different values would show a different side of me, a different island of my personality because I'm definitely connected to family and I could start off with this essay about how, oh, I might used to play games with my family and here's what my family means to me now. Separate paragraph. I've also found that games help me connect with people on a deeper level. For example, when I was in theater growing up, I found that the theater games allowed me to you know, let down my defenses and connect with others, right? Also, games help me explore my creative side. So I love thinking of new ways of playing them, but also in life, my creativity expresses itself in all these other ways. So suddenly you take the thing like the topic, this would be your topic, right? Your theme for your essay. And you start to connect it to different values and each value represents a different side of you. And it's a cool way of showing lots of who you are through one topic. So let's play this game. Take something from your list, a something that you love or know a lot about. And I want you to see how many values you can connect it to. 
And let's see if we can brainstorm a personal statement in these eight minutes. And, and what I want you to do is either mentally or like typing, I want you to go ahead and create one of these. My students call this a jellyfish where it's like, here's the thing at the top and then just write the values beneath it. You don't, you can, if you wanna draw this or you can just type it, okay? So here's the list of values. And again, in the chat box, I want you all to see what, what, what is the thing that could potentially be a topic. And, and a good topic is something that, you know, you can connect to lots of different sides of yourself. So here's how you can find out if it connects to lots of different sides of yourself and how many different values slash islands of your personality could you connect it to? Do this right now, see how it goes. That's okay, Jasmine, go ahead, take your time. JROTC can be a topic that works. How many different sides of you can you connect it to? If you can connect it to like four or five, that's an awesome start. Throw it into the chat box. Great, Madeline, I love it. See if, so Danielle, friendship is already a, a, a kind of a, a value. Is there something else, a, 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 an even more specific topic that you might be able to find that would still connect to some of those values? Keep, keep going, so do another one. Same for you, Ella. So creativity, because it's already a value in itself, is there a specific way that your creativity expresses itself that you could connect to different values? There you go, Jasmine. Yeah, look at that. Oh my gosh, so much. You could connect to many different sides of yourself through that. Okay, so I'm not gonna spend all of our time on this, but actually let's do one more. Shrika's got dance here, cool. So one of the things that you're looking for when you're trying to find a personal statement topic is one, is it elastic? In other words, is it stretchy enough to talk about many different sides of yourself? So for example, Wendy's got horses connects to self-control, connects to health and fitness, also connects us to bravery and adventure, three different sides of me. And you could talk, Wendy, about how, you know, self-control and why that's important in your life, how health and fitness have manifested in your life, right? All to the topic of horses. So that's elastic. And this thing that I just gave you is a key to testing whether or not your topic is elastic or not. Elastic meaning stretchy enough to talk about different sides of you. The second thing that I look for personally when I'm looking for a topic is, is it somewhat uncommon? And that's the hard part, right? Because many students will write about things like playing the violin, right? Or, you know, uh, debate, you know, or a mission trip. Like these are common topics. So one of the things that's tricky, but worth trying to do is seeing, could you find something that's somewhat uncommon? If you've got an extracurricular activity like theater or art making, or, you know, these kinds of things will make great supplemental essays. But oftentimes for the personal statement, finding something a little more specific can help you stand out a little more. All right. That's all I'm gonna say about the personal statement for now. Let's move forward, shall we? All right, so if you want to, you can just take your phone and like, like scan this with like just with the camera and use the QR code to go straight to the handout and you can follow along with me. But if you don't want to, you totally don't have to. You can type in your browser, collegeessayguy.com slash get the handout or just follow along because I'm gonna share this as well. All right, so I'm going to stop screen sharing and I'm going to sh share my other screen. What if every time I switched screens, I switched accents? I could do that. I could do that for y'all. All right, so here's the tasting menu. This is the handout. And we've talked about these things. And now it's on to three resources for improving your activities list. So your activities list is really important when you're applying to college because it's your place to talk about all the stuff you've done. This is your brag sheet, your resume, your curriculum vitae. And I think sometimes students spend a lot of time on their college essay, which is to say like their personal statement, but they don't spend as much time on their activities list. When the difference between an okay activities list and a rock star activities list usually is like an hour. Um, so I wanna give you some resources to how you can, when it comes time, if you're in 10th, 11th grade, when you're writing your activities list to broaden that. And if you are right now applying to college, this is gonna be useful for you like today. So the first one is something called the BBs exercise, which is a silly acronym for the best extracurricular activity brainstorm I have ever seen. And it's useful in two ways. One, it's useful for your activities list, but it's also useful for, 
useful if you're brainstorming an essay on an extracurricular activity topic. Like some of y'all mentioned theater or you mentioned dance. Like this will help you brainstorm how to write a better theater essay or a better dance essay. All right, so here are the questions that I would recommend asking if you're trying to figure out what, what do I put in the activities list? Because your activities list is gonna be, you're gonna have room in the Common App, which is the platform that you'll use to apply to most universities. Sometimes schools have school specific ones like MIT and Georgetown, but most schools will be on the Common App and they're gonna give you 10 blanks and they're gonna give you just 150 characters. And how do you pack information? How do you, how do you describe your activities? Well, one way is to just describe what you did. Make a list of all the responsibilities that you had. The second is to think about, well, what problems did I solve? Problems internally. I overcame, you know, my shyness, my self-doubt. Problems in the community. You know, I brought people together. People, you know, the, the community was fractured or people were feeling disconnected from one another. So I helped bring people together. What lessons did you learn or skills did you gain? For this, I'd recommend this values exercise that I just flashed up earlier. It's like, well, what are the different things that you learned? I connected with my health. I be, you know, became more curious about other, you know, Culturals or cultures. Um, impact. Schools love to hear if you've had impact. Maybe you had a club that was, you know, all male, for example, and then you were able to, through your leadership, you were able to make more, you know, create, bring more gender balance or diversity. So, what impact did you have? Give us a sense of that. Use numbers. Use actual quotes to support what it is, what that you've done. And then you won't really have room for this in the activities list, but you might have room for this in an extracurricular activity essay. So how did you apply what you learned? So you learned, you know, whatever it is, teamwork or confidence or something, you know, in the activity. How did you then apply that into some other area of your life? Because then it's not only about, this is for an extracurricular activity essay. It's not just about theater, or just about dance. It's about, here's how this impacted me, changed me. Okay, so that's one resource. And what you'll see on this is just a whole bunch of column, a bunch of questions that you can ask yourself in order to fill in these columns. And I think it's worth it to spend five to eight minutes per activity for think, thinking about all these things, because it's gonna to bring tons more information. If you're writing an extracurricular activity essay on Chinese dance club or rowing or whatever it is, I'd say spend 20 minutes on this because it's gonna give you tons and tons of content. And you'll see some examples here and then a little blank template that you can use if you like. All right, so that's resource number one. Resource number two is when, when you're trying to think of stuff that you've done, Active verbs are really useful. And if you're like, well, what do you mean by active verbs? What, you think I'm just gonna give you a list? Actually, yeah, I'm gonna give you a list of awesome activities list verbs. So this is when you're thinking about leadership. Like, well, well I, I led, well, what does that mean? Did you establish something? Did you generate, increase, recruit, partner, prioritize, produce, restructure, supervise? What did that mean? You know, give us some specific active verbs. This is gonna up-level your activities list in, like I said about, well, the whole process will maybe take you an hour, but in like five minutes, just looking at the verbs here. And, and, and it'll also help you remember the stuff that you did, okay? Then when you're done, and this is mostly for you seniors who are working on this right now, do a value scan. Look through your, um, your list and ask yourself, well, which values are coming through really clearly? Someone's asking me, how do you get that handled again? Now Andrea's like, oh, that does seem useful. <laughs> here, I'm gonna put the link in the chat box again collegeessayguide.com slash get the handout. You got it, there you go. Okay, so do a value scan, which is to say, look at the description that you've written and ask yourself which values are coming through. Great, you've got leadership there, but could you include other values? You know, could we see your creativity? Could we see your hard work? Um, so these resources are gonna help you, like I said, level up your activities list. Let's move on. The Why Us Essay. So the why us essay is a really important one. Um, for certain schools, it's, you know, it's, it's as important, if not even more important than your personal statement. Now your personal statement is 650 words and it's usually written via the Common App and that reveals who you are. The why us essay is gonna be an essay that not all schools will require, but some will be like, why do you wanna to apply to our program, you know, our, our school? And it might be 250 words, it might be 500 words. You have to kind of look and see what the word limit is. You'll find all the word limits usually on the school website or inside the Common App. Now, what I recommend, here's a little research chart, is doing your research. Why? Because this is a research essay. You're not going to find from your head what makes this, you know, what makes this a school special. So you've got to go do research. I recommend researching, you know, and listing sort of generally what you're looking for and then getting into the niche. 
you know, are you, if you're interested in business, is it marketing, management, entrepreneurship, or entrepreneurs hip, as it says here? Um, I'm going to move this over. <laughs> not that anybody really cares, but me. Um, but then not just like, what, what am I looking for? But what is it that the school offers in your niche or niche, if you like? And then importantly, how will you contribute and engage? So I've joined DECA Club to immerse myself into the world of marketing. What else have you done? How will you continue to do that on campus? What specific resources will help you do it? Specific, specific, specifics. I'm going to give you some examples in a second. And not just academics, but other interests. You know, interests connected to extracurricular activities or your identity, what, how you identify communities you're a part of, values that are important to you. Okay. So how do you fill out this chart? There's a little walkthrough of how to do that. And then what I'd recommend, let me just show you some examples real quick, is picking one of these approaches. So I've got a couple different approaches for the YSSA. So the first one, and this one is best, I think if you, well, let me just tell you what it is first and then I'll tell you which one I think is best. The Why Michigan essay. I'm gonna to read to you the opening of this so we can kind of see the structure of how these essays are written. Mark Twain was a steamboat pilot. Agatha Christie was a nurse. Robert Frost was a light bulb filament changer. The best writers do not only write beautifully, but also integrate their personal experiences and knowledge outside the world of literature. By combining the study of literature, media, and perhaps law, I believe the University of Michigan will provide the education necessary for me to evolve as a journalist. All right, there's a lot that's going well in this paragraph. First of all, the paragraph isn't that long. It's the intro is 68 words, and this is a 500 word essay. And the hook, which is to say the part that grabs our attention, is, what is this, 40 words? Whoops, sorry, I just X'd it out. <laughs> it's 40 words. Now, if you wanna do a hook and be clever, I say keep it short for these because what's really important is getting as soon as you can into how is it the school specifically is going to connect to your, going to connect to your specific interests, needs, desires, okay? So super short hook and, and sets up the frame. And he says, University of Michigan is gonna provide me the education as a, evolve as a journalist. This weird coincidence, I just emailed with this student. This student, I worked with this student like 14 years ago. Yeah, um, but he emailed me today, we emailed. Um, so he wants to be a journalist and notice that he's treating journalism like an interdisciplinary thing because, oh, by the way, pretty much everything that you study in college is gonna be interdisciplinary. So media, literature, media, and law. And this paragraph's gonna be on literature. This paragraph's gonna be on media and this is gonna be on law. This is like straight up English essay 101, right? Here's my map with my thesis. My thesis is me, the school and I are going to be a great, a perfect match. And here's why. A journalist can't reach the peak of his craft if his knowledge of literature and critical thinking skills are weak. So I'm gonna get into the Department of English. What do you wanna study? Get specific. I look for capital letters here. I look forward to courses like academic argumentation and professional writing. But don't just say that because they know they have those classes. How is it gonna connect back to you? As I believe these will provide me with, get specific, a firm basis in journalistic writing technique and improve my abilities to write analytically and develop well-supported arguments. There, we got a little specific, nice. Furthermore, the professional writing course, if he was just like, is awesome, we'd be like, yeah, we know it's awesome. Will teach me how to write in a concise, straightforward style, a skill vital to a journalist. Got it, now we see how it's gonna connect to you. So this is like YSSA 101. Here's the specific thing the school offers, and here's the specific way that it's gonna connect back to me. If you just say that the school has this awesome program, and leave it to them to say how it connects back to you, they're gonna be like, uh, okay, cool story, right? So you gotta bring it back to, here's how it's gonna help you. What is it gonna equip you with? I'm not gonna read this whole essay to you, but then he gets into media studies. Again, he's going, here's this thing you have and here's how it's gonna help me. And then law, you know, here's this thing you have and here's how it's gonna help me. And then, oh, by the way, I wanna give back as well, bonus. Um, and he's got probably like, I would guess like 10 reasons in here. And by reasons, I mean like the honors program is a reason. Academic argumentation and professional writing, that's two reasons, okay? So I'm gonna suggest that you research, research, research. Now, that's approach one, which I call your basic solid YSSA that includes a bunch of reasons. But this approach is called the three to five unique offerings strategy. Now, if you can find three to five things that set that part, that school apart from other schools you're applying to, and maybe, all the schools, it's hard to research that, even better. So this essay begins with a student talking about, you know, whenever I have time on my hands, I hook myself up to my EEG and analyze my brain waves. Super geeky and I love it. Or if I'm feeling slightly less adventurous, I'm reading about the latest neuroscience trends in NC Science Director, NCBI PubMed. 
Here's his thesis. I want to spend my life studying, understanding, and helping to fix the human brain. So that's like a personal mission statement. Now, he hasn't mentioned Cornell yet, but he's about to. He talks about, you know, buying an EEG, geeking out. There's like some cool, what I call geeky language, non-circadian sleep and theta waves. He says, I look forward to gaining a deeper understanding of the fundamentals of neurophysiology in courses like Principles of Neurophysiology. Now check this sentence out. As someone who has long been passionate about neurotechnology, the fact that Cornell is unique in offering classes devoted specifically to the field is very important to me. See what's going on there? He's just found something that sets Cornell apart from the other schools he's applying to. But he doesn't stop there. He talks about Cornell's Neuronex Hub and Dr. Chris Schaefer, check it out, whose research on deep neural activity is not being done anywhere else in the world. Ah, now Cornell is special to him, okay? And he could be special to Cornell. And then he talks about this professor whose class he sat, on, sat in on pre-COVID. He wants to go to Cornell because of teachers like her. Now, this professor probably won't be teaching some, you know, other, other than Cornell. So here's another, a third reason. And then he talks about how classical language, he's a nerd for it. And it turns out that it also, you know, helps your brain. And Cornell is also the only university I'm interested in that offers a speaking course in Latin, conversational Latin. So there's the fourth reason. Now, when I get to the end of this essay, I'm like, oh, this is like, it's so clear to me that Cornell is a great fit for him for these reasons. And he kind of devotes a paragraph to each one. So what I would say is if you can find three to five specific reasons, sweet. By specific, I mean like unique reasons. If you can't, then I would say, go ahead and do this broad, broad one. Someone asked, did the people who wrote these essays get into college? They did. In some cases, they didn't end up there. So this guy who wrote this thing about journalism, he ended up going to Northwestern, um, studying Studying, actually studying journalism, and then he went to dental school, of all places, at UCLA. Just goes to show you, you never know, quite know, because he makes this great argument for why he's going to be a great journalist. Okay, um, and then there's this other approach, which I'm not going to read the whole essay here, where you could, if you wanted to, focus on one particular value. And this is like one specific thing that connects you to the school, and then just tell a really great story about it, and you'll see an example there. You can read it later. Okay. Da, 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 dee. All right, let's get into this question of when you're trying to figure, like if you're, if you're a senior right now and you're trying to address COVID-19, um, here's a little guide. And this is, there's a longer guide that's like 10 pages long. I'm gonna give you the short version. So this year, Common App and the Coalition App, which is another platform for applying to schools, have this specific section where you can address uh, coronavirus. Now I'm gonna keep this relatively short because I know that there are only a couple seniors on and a lot of other folks are 10th and 11th graders, but Maybe this will be useful for you in a year or two if we still haven't found a vaccine. Hopefully we have. So if you want to write about challenges that you've experienced, um, I would say keep it brief. And what I mean by this is like, you can probably fit it into the 250 word section. So I wouldn't recommend writing your whole personal statement on COVID experiences. And you can bullet point it this way. What were the challenges and effects that you experienced? Next, what did you do about it? And then what did you learn through the experience? And by the way, if you're, if you're writing a personal statement on a challenge that you've experienced, this is a good, simple outline. Challenges and effects, what did you do about it? What did you learn? And that works for personal statements. It works for writing about COVID. It, work, it works for extracurricular activities. But some of you haven't really experienced challenges and you're like, should I still fill this in? You don't have to. But if you do, you might just decide to focus on, I'm, I'm mentioning it again, the values that you gain. So maybe you created a, you know, a, a gym in your house during the pandemic. So you connect with the values of health or discipline, or maybe you were able to like spend a lot more time with your family and you all played more games. We certainly have. So maybe you connected with the value of family. So what are the two or three things that you connected with more deeply and how did you do that? What games did you play? Um, like you can tell me the games and values guy, that's pretty much 30% of me. Um, but I wouldn't recommend writing about coronavirus. Why? I think that a boring essay, now this is a personal statement or supplemental essay, chooses a common topic, makes common connections, and uses common language, and oftentimes uses you know, common achievements. And I think that coronavirus is gonna be a common topic this year. So it's harder to stand out. Whereas a standout essay, if possible, chooses an uncommon topic, makes uncommon connections, which I'll explain in just a second, includes uncommon achievements, only if you've got those, you don't have to have those to have a great essay, and uses uncommon language. 
Now, what do I mean by this? I mean, give you an example in just a, just a few minutes, but, but the most important thing here is uncommon connections. So again, let me just bring up this values list. Let's say you're writing about something like dance. Dance is a very common topic, but how do you stand out? Let's say that you're writing a supplemental essay and they ask, what's an extracurricular activity you spend a lot of time doing? Well, if you're writing about dance, there are probably some very common values that you could connect it to and some more uncommon ones. So let's just brainstorm an essay for, let's see, who's writing about dance? Uh, Shrika. So what are, some, um, what are some common values that other people might focus? Actually, let's not choose dance because I don't want, I don't want uh, Shrika to get too self-conscious. Let's choose something like uh, football. Football is another extremely common topic. So what are some values that are super common values? What are the cliche values in, in a football essay? Type them in the chat box. Hard work, competition, endurance, strength, fame. <laughs> That's funny. Teamwork, exactly. Right. Now, these are the things that we would typically read in a football essay. So if you want to stand out with a common topic, in fact, the more common your topic is, the more uncommon the connections you're making to certain values. So play this game with me now. If you were going to write an uncommon and just so that I, it's clear that you're typing an uncommon one, write UC colon and give me a value that you could connect to football that we might not expect. Wit, laughter, uh huh? Keep going. What are some others? You wouldn't expect this in a football essay. Nature, self expression, healing. Nice. Expertise. Okay. Y'all see what this is about? Close relationships. Yeah. I mean, maybe that one's, that one's kind of in the middle, I think, you know, we're not just a team. We're more like a family, you know? So if you were to do close relationships, we'd need to see what is the uncommon language version of that. Yeah. How have I connected with my faith order? That's interesting. Okay. The reason I say this is that I'd much rather read a football essay that talks about how you've learned the value of order and what you've learned about healing and uh, nature than how I've learned about discipline, hard work, and perseverance, right? Simple exercise, but a powerful one for brainstorming uncommon, not just uncommon topics, but uncommon ways of talking about your, your whatever your topic is. Consider um, better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's, you know I was gonna say that. Your ingredients of your essay are not your topic. Like, so you're not writing a dance essay. You're not writing a football essay or debate essay. Your ingredients are the connections that you're making around your topic. Does that make sense? So this isn't about an essay about football. It's an essay about healing. It's an essay about faith. It's an essay about beauty, right? And how these things manifest in my life. Yes, I connect to them through football, but really it's about all these other values because that's what colleges want to know. Colleges want to know what are the values the skills, the qualities, the interests that you're bringing with you to the college campus, okay? So again, I wouldn't recommend talking about COVID, put COVID in that extra section and write about something else. All right, let me spend six minutes talking about some more resources for y'all. This is where, this is the buffet part. <laughs> and then um, we'll kick it over to, to do Q and A about, actually let's do it in five minutes. So we got 15 minutes, all right. So this is what I call my college application hub. And I'll throw it, actually, I'm not gonna throw it in the chat box yet. I'll do it at the Q&A because I wanna kind of walk you through it. So if you're trying to figure out what schools to apply to, whether you're 10th, 11th, or if you're a senior and you feel like I don't have enough schools that I've thought about, there's a resource here called how to develop a great college list that walks you through a series of free resources that you can use to figure out, number one, what, you know, what am I looking for? And there's like some surveys and stuff. There's a great app called Corsava to help you figure out just what, what is it that I'm looking for. And then you can go to this website called College Express that has a whole bunch of lists, everything from schools for the free spirit to great private colleges for the B student. Okay. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to take whatever schools you find through your research and put them onto this college list research and essay topic tracker. Check this out. So you basically put here are the schools that I'm applying. So you put all your schools. You know, and I, I recommend, you know, getting a range. Some definitely some schools you got a pretty good shot at, some maybes, and yeah, some reaches, and maybe one wild card. But once you've done that, take all the essay prompts, put them on this 
you know, this sheet, put the word limit. What is the topic that you've chosen? Just organize. It's a simple, free organizer. Okay. Anyway, you'll, you can kind of walk through and you can see how to research schools, but this is going to be a great set of resources to help you figure out what the heck am I looking for and how do I organize my time? Another resource, if you're trying to figure out what should I be doing when, which by the way, I, I, I bought the website for, what should I be doing right now? Um, here's what you should be doing ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, all the things with links, okay? How to research schools without having to visit, especially used for right now. Should I apply uh, early action, or early decision? Some students, you, you have a better chance in some cases of getting an early decision. Check this out. There's a cool chart. So I did a podcast with um, Jenny and Jeff, Jeff, Jenny Kent and Jeff Levy, and they put together this resource, check this out, that will tell you what the early decision acceptance rate versus the regular dec decision acceptance rate was. So for example, for American University, you might like to know that if you apply early decision, it's an 84.7% chance of acceptance. Now it's binding. So if you get in, you have to go there. You have to pay whatever they tell you to pay. And the regular decision acceptance rate was 33%. So, and you can see this for any schools that have regular decision early, you know, or have early decision. All schools have regular decision, but like, you know, Claremont McKenna, 28% for ED, regular decision, 8%. There's a whole reason behind this, which I explain in this guide. Um, some of the resources here are like brains, more brainstorming for personal statement stuff. Um, what else, what else? Oh, in terms of school specific supplemental essay guides, if there's a particular school you're looking for, check this out. Oh, I'm applying to Boston College, I'm applying to BU. I probably created a crash course for how to write the essays for that particular school. This took a lot of time, y'all. You can tell this is like, I clearly have no life. I've got a great team that I work with. Here's how to combine your essay prompts to save a bunch of time. Here's the full version of that YS guide that I shared with you pieces of. Bunch of stuff on other pieces, the activities list, the comprehensive guide. There's a section of your application called the additional information section. There's a whole thing on how to write and what to write in there. How to get great recommendation letters. Should I write a resume or not? Should I interview or not? And if so, how do I prepare? This interview guide is bonkers, y'all. Check this out. Uh, this is the table of contents for it. Why do colleges give interviews? How do you prepare? What do they look for? How are scholarship interviews different? All the things. Once your application submitted, here's stuff on scholarship essay. So I went through, I worked with um, uh, a company called Going Mary and they looked at 700 essay prompts and came up with the most common ones. And I took the top 10 most common prompts and I basically created a guide for each one of these, each one of the top 10 most common ones. Sarah's asking, can you provide the link for the ED and RD acceptance rates? No, you'll have to go through the hub, which I'll share with you in two minutes. Um, I mean, it's right there. Uh, deferrals and wait lists. How do you appeal financial aid? How do you actually pick a college when you get into places? What do you do if you're rejected from every college you apply to? And if you're worried about that, click on that because it's going to tell you what to do before you get to that place. Bunches of other stuff. If you are interested in art school or I just had a, a theater, you know, if you're a theater nerd, I just did a webinar last week with um, Chris Anderson, who was the former head of admissions, director of admissions at Tisch. Um, and uh, we're probably gonna do a podcast soon. To find out more of stuff like this, if you scroll to the bottom of any of these pages and just put in your name and email address, um, you'll get added and you'll, you know, you'll get notices when I hand out, send out more free resources. Um, homeschoolers, if you identify as LGBTQ, um, you know, lots of resources, you know, how to come out, should I come out of my essay or not? Um, if you are an undocumented student or if you're a counselor who's working with undocumented students, should I come out as undocumented or not? Women's colleges, veterans, all the things. So anyway, I'm gonna put paste this link in and we're right on time for Q and A. I love when that happens. So that's the hub. And that's what I've got. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here in a second. Um, but let me actually, you know what, let me do this to this. But -dum -bum -bum. Because folks were asking about this. I'm just gonna put it up again. So if you want the handout, there it is. Get the handout. Just put in your name, put in your email, and voila. All right, so let me pause for a second and see if y'all have questions. What questions do y'all have? I know, I just threw a lot at you. I was kind of like, here are all these little things and then blah, here's everything. What questions do you have about this process? Any part of it?
I will be your magic eight ball. Y'all may, may not even know what magic eight balls are. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second. And I'm, I'm, I know there are two questions in there and I'm gonna answer those in just a second, but I, if I start answering them too soon, other folks don't end up um, you know, getting their questions answered, so. Oh, good question. I like that one. I'll have to reshare my screen to answer your question, Christopher. I'm going to pause for just 30 seconds more to see if anybody else has other questions, because as soon as I start to answer questions, you're going to be listening to the, the answers and you're going to not um, think, be thinking of other questions. I want to see if we can get another five to 10 questions. What do you got? Anything you can think of, go. And if you could, give me a sense of what grade you're in when you're writing your question, um, because that'll help me. Because it's the, sometimes the answer is different from for 10th graders than it is for 12th graders. All right. Here we go. I'm going to go from the top. For the Match Ladder Scholarship, um, is it an actual scholarship or just where counselors help students with college apps? Good question. So it's not like we're giving you money. It's it's you are getting for free help from counselors who might otherwise have to be paid. So like in some cases they are counselors at private high schools. In some cases they are independent counselors, but they've decided to generously donate their time. We've got about 350 so far, I think paired this year uh, to be matched with a student 101. And sometimes that costs lots and lots of money. But for you, if you're a low income student, it's free. And the way that you get it is all explained on the website. What do you suggest looking at as a high school junior? Can you be a little more specific, Claudia? What do you mean suggest looking at as a high school junior? Um, looking at in what sense? Like what would I suggest doing? If it's what would I suggest doing as a high school junior? Um, everything that I put on the guide for that's in the application hub, let me just share my screen. I'm still tempted to like change my accent. Let's take a look at this, right? There we are. Um, so what I want you to do is take a look at this. <laughs> it's coming in and out of Australian. It's like, it's almost like dialing in Australian, but it's not quite um, like a radio dial. This is what I think you should be doing right now if you're a junior. So I'll, I'll, but I'll, I'll just put that in the chat box. All right. If you've got a more specific question, Claudia, like what should you be, I mean, generally you should be getting awesome grades, following whatever it is you care about and doing that in your extracurriculars. But you knew that. And, and maybe starting to look at, think about your college list using the first resource on the hub. The hub. Okay. Um, what do we, where do we get a review for our essay? Um, there's a cool company called Prompt. Um, if you email the, through the College Essay Guy website, I'll connect you to this cool uh, service that does that. Random question. What was your new tab? Thanks. I love this question. So Christopher, this is my, this is a, a, a Chrome extension called the Google Death Clock that every time I open a new tab, it gives me, based on the average life expectancy, you put in your birthday and it tells you how many days, hours, minutes, and seconds you have left. Isn't that cool? Um, and it's like, hey, are you sure? And it opens up with a new cool picture. Are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure? Some people find it dark. I find it to be actually like a good check-in to be like, is this what I want to be doing with my life? All right. Um, where can I find a list of your upcoming webinars? So if you scroll to the bottom, Kaylee, and you sign up for the newsletter, I'll send you ones when we plan them. So we don't have anything planned for like next week. Usually we kind of plan them as we go. We've got something coming up on the UK schools in a couple weeks, like how to apply to schools in the UK with a guy named David, who's an expert on that. And so, you know, you'll, you'll get that there. But I would say also some of the stuff that you're interested in, Kaylee, is probably on the podcast. So if you go to, and I, we spent a lot of time with the podcast stuff, like answering a lot of the top questions that students have. So ba -dum -bum -bum. here we go. Here are all the episodes. So if there's something like, you know, uh, ba -dum -bum -bum, how to figure out which school is right for you. Here's, here's you know, if you ever see that FISC guide, which is like the guide that's in your counselor's office, how to find and research great colleges, how to use the secrets of screenwriting to write your college essay. 
you know, if you're applying to art school, and then a lot of these are uh, connected to like a, a free resource, how to raise your, don't worry about this, don't worry about testing, how to improve your personal statement in 20 minutes. Um, so yeah, lots of stuff there. Where should I start getting ideas? I'm a junior in high school. Uh, do you mean ideas for your college essay? If so, I've got a bunch of them here through the resources on the hub. So here, these are some great exercises to try. Um, when should I start writing my college app essay? I would say, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I would say um, a good time to start writing is like at the end of your junior year. So, you know, there's like that sweet spot where you've like finished finals, but you're like, when we had in-person classes, you're like watching movies in class. Usually it's like late May. I don't know if this is true in your school, but in my public school, in high school, we were like doing nothing. That was the time to start. Now, some of you are gonna have you know, things that happen to you in, um, like you're gonna have like schools that actually make this a requirement. Um, and you know, that you'll, you'll do it in your English class, but I think end of junior year is a good time to start writing. How do we narrow down our major choices for colleges? Many of them suggest writing what you're considering and I'm having a hard time narrowing them down. Madeline, I mean, so there are a couple of resources when you go into the, the resource that I shared on how to create a great college list. One is called Do What You Are. One is called You Science. But if you're a senior, Madeline, those resources might take you a little while and you probably have essays that are due in like a month. I would say pick something, <laughs> like pick one or two things and make an argument for why that would be a cool thing to do. And hopefully it's connected to things you've been doing because that kind of helps make the argument and roll with it. And if you need to change your major, in many cases you can. Make sure that you can. So make sure that you're applying to a certain school that if you want to change your major that you're able to do that. But I would say pick something. Probably don't pick four things. Pick like one, two, or at the most three things, especially if you're writing a really short essay. I find that like if you're trying to write three things for like 125 why major essay for like Yale, it ends up being pretty tight. You can really only do like one sentence per why I want to study that thing. So how do you whittle it down? There's some work I would recommend, like I said, do what you are, use science, but those are going to take you like an hour and a half to work through. So if you've got time, go for it. If you're a 10th and 11th grader and you're trying to figure out what you care about, do what you are, use science. One is a book, the other one is an online platform. University of Michigan is not on the sheet. Which sheet do you mean, Sarah? Let me know. Does Eastern Nazarene require a GPA requirement? I don't know, I'm assuming so, because most schools ask for your GPA, but you'd have to probably go to their website and find out. Can an essay scare the admit people? Maybe, Wendy, but it probably only just a little bit and hopefully in a good way. So is there, what do you mean by scare? Like, give me, give me some more context. How are you thinking of scaring them? Um, do you have any links for aptitude test type things to help decide a major? Yeah, you science. So if you go to YOU, let me just show you this. I should probably be like a salesperson because I'm such a fan of you science. So if you go to this, sometimes I sing when I switch my screens. You science, it's like, I think it's like 10 bucks. It's not much. But it basically measures your interests and aptitudes. And it tells you, based on the way this 90 minute assessment goes, here are the things that I'm good at. And here's how it matches up with a particular career. So, like the yellow dots are like, here's how you scored on this assessment. And this is like a particular career that, like, you know, for example, you scored below the what you normally need in this and you scored above this. So, anyway, that's, that's not a very good explanation, but it's basically rating your interests and aptitudes against the interests and aptitudes required by folks who tend to go into this career, whatever it is. Pretty cool. Tell them I sent you. I don't know. There's not there's a place to do that. Is there a guide for the UC personal insight questions? But of course, I wouldn't be college essay guy living in California if I didn't do that. So if you go into, so I basically created this whole course. It's pay what you can. By the way, everything on my site that's not free is pay what you can, which literally means you can pay whatever you want um, because access is really important to me. So yes, there's a whole guide. I spent like two months on it. I've spent long, I've spent like, a bunch of years thinking about this, but it's got a ton of examples and walks you through the whole deal. Would I write one single essay for all of my applications to different colleges? So if you're applying to a bunch of schools via the Common App, then part of what's great about the Common App is that you'll use one application with all your basic information, your personal statement, which is one essay that will go to those schools that are on the Common App. If the school's not on the Common App, then you'll need to, usually you can take that essay and use it for those schools. But one personal statement for all those, yes. And then individually, those schools are going to have separate essays called supplemental essays. Hello, I'm a senior in high school. Hi. 
I wrote about perseverance and inspiration to challenge myself in the comment of essay. As you mentioned, this is a common essay topic. Should I change it? Maybe. Yeah, you've got time. You've got a month and a half, hopefully, until the regular decision deadlines. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds a little bit general. I'm not a little bit, I'm not super clear on what your topic is, but if you're using words like perseverance and inspiration, yeah, those are somewhat common values um, to challenge myself, but there's so many cool ways to find a topic. Um, and a lot of those are in on my website. Can you be so weird and different, not freaky, but outside the norm that it scares them? Sure. If you talked about like, yes, of course, I was gonna say like the creepiest thing I could think of, but you can probably imagine um, creepy things to write about and think about that would scare them, of course. But there, there's also good weird, right? So you kind of got to find the balance. You're, you're, the point is, and this probably goes without saying, is to stand out, but in a good way. Is it hard to get into UT? It is, Joanna, especially if you're not from Texas. Um, so do you have experience with working with people applying to private Christian colleges? For sure. I mean, I work with students who apply to all kinds of schools. So yes. And you have, you have a specific question about that? Let me know. My sister went to one. My sister went to APU. Azusa Pacific. Any other questions? We've got a few minutes here. Let me see if anything came through in the chat box. Uh, yes. Ooh, Daniel's. Oh, let me see. Daniel's got a great one. Any advice for transfer students? Yeah, Daniel, if you Google transfer college essay guy, you'll see a whole guide. I'm in 11th grade and in dual enrollment at my local community college. Yeah. There's a whole guide on how to write a transfer essay. There are seven elements that I think should go in there. And when you're explaining why do you, why do you want to transfer, we're, you know, if you're coming from community college, we need to understand why did you enroll in community college initially? It's it's a smart, I think it's a smart choice. And some of it's going to be, they're going to know why, but, you know, stating it explicitly. Um, yeah, and there's a whole guide. You're welcome, Danielle. Another question. Uh, I want to become a dentist, specifically an orthodontist. You personally know of any great dental schools on the East Coast. I don't personally know a bunch about dental schools. Um, but... If you want to, you can use the resource that I suggested in the how to like create a great college list. And you can probably find a list of those on College Express. Let me just search College Express Dental Schools. Yeah, I mean, there, there are a bunch of different ones. So here, so search College Express. I mean, this is like accelerated dental programs. So it just kind of depends on what program that you're interested in. Um, but like, if you just search College Express dental programs, this will pop up, you know, BU's got one, Case Western, you're talking about East Coast. So like Lehigh, um, Muhlenberg, NYU, but these are accelerating. So a lot of times this means that you're like, it's just a, you'll, you'll see, you know, these programs are often different. So I don't want to say it is like this, but, um, and then the other thing, when I Googled this, you know, majors by dental school preparation, anyway. You'll, you'll, College Express is my go-to spot for these. All right. Two more questions. I'm doing in-class learning, but my counselor is out with COVID. Oh, I'm sorry. And I want to talk with her about how, when to start looking at colleges. As a junior, should I just wait until after Christmas break and arrange a meeting with her? No, Claudia, use my guide. Get started. I mean, having her input is going to be awesome, but there's no reason to wait. I think if you're excited and motivated to start, excited and motivated is kind of the same thing. But if you're excited, just use that guide. Here, I'll link to it one more time. Uh, ba -dum -bum -bum. Here, let me just show you all where this is because I think a lot of y'all are interested in this. So if you go to the hub, I'm going to link it one more time. And I'm going to share my screen last time and then we'll call it. Here we go. So when you go to the college application hub, how to develop a great college list is the first one. And it'll show you all kinds of ways to, to research that. So I check that out. Even now, you can check it out right now. Uh, you're welcome. What GPA do you need for TCU? If you want to know approximately what most students have, just Google TCU or whatever school freshman profile, and it'll tell you what students uh, tend to have when they enroll at the school. All right, last ones. If you homeschool, where do we get access to a guidance counselor? -dum -bum -bum. I mean, it's a hard one to answer. How do you get access to a guidance counselor? There's an organization called IECA. Uh, you know what? I can connect you with one. I can connect you with one. Um, a, a, but it's a private counselor. This person charges money, not too much money, but it's really cool. So Wendy, email, um, and I will, I'll, I'll connect you with this person. 
Last one. Have you heard of the University of Advancing Technology? It's, is it a good school to study game program? Sorry, I've never heard of it. I don't know, anonymous attendee. All right, friends, thanks for being here. And um, yeah, I hope you learned some stuff. Hi, Andy. Hello. Ethan, I just wanted to pop in real quick and thank you so much for uh, a wealth of information, a wealth of uh, resources, all that good stuff. So much good shared this evening. I also wanted to encourage the uh, 33 of you that are still with us to pop over uh, to the college fair that's happening tonight, myblueprintstory.swugo.com um, and click the visit college booths. So uh, a few schools that were asked about in the chat will be um, there as a college booth and we encourage you to, to bump over and uh, check out that college fair as well. So again, thank you so much, Ethan. We really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me. All righty. All right, friends, take care. And we'll hopefully see you again at another college fair, virtual college fair coming up soon. Peace.